Hi, Huckleberry here. And today we're going to take a deep dive into how Tor works. Now here we are with the Tor webpage, and I'm just going to read a little bit about how they describe what Tor does. And then later on, we're going to go into how it works. Now I've created some original graphics um, to show you this, so I hope you enjoy those. Anyway, let me go ahead and read what Tor says ab about what it does. Tor protects you by bouncing your communications around the distributed network of relays run by volunteers all around the world. It prevents somebody watching your internet connection from learning what sites you visit, and it prevents the sites you visit from learning your physical location. So basically, Tor is an, a tool for anonymity, so neither the website you're visiting nor your ISP will be able to see who you are or to be able to track you. Now, you may know that you are tracked all over the place when you're not using Tor, and that is why you would want to use it. So let's get into exactly how this um, protects you. Now, here we are at the Tor web browser. Now, the Tor web browser is actually about half of what Tor is. One half is the, is the Tor web browser, which is actually a hardened uh, Firefox web browser um, with a number, of, uh, a number of features that make it more anonymous. Uh, and it is also your Tor network, which is Tor, uh, consists of volunteer Tor routers all over the world. Okay, so if we click on, in the uh, Tor browser, if we click on Test for Network Connections, it'll go ahead and do that. And it says that, you're, you can notice right here, it says that your um, internet IP address appears to be 193.90.12.87. That is not my real IP address uh, by any means. Let me show you how it got that. If you come over to here and click on the onion, it shows that there are, it has created a path through three different Tor nodes. The first one here is, begins with the 209. That's in the United States. And then the second one is um, in Germany, begins with 141. That's right here. And then um, the last one is in Norway, beginning with 193. Now you can see that that last, uh, that last hop IP address is what your IP appears to be from, um, other, from anywhere that you uh, browse to. Okay, so here we see my PC. Imagine this is my PC here, and I want to connect to the Tor network. How does it do that? Well, the first thing it does is it, it obtains a list of Tor nodes from a directory server. And you can, you can see that here. That's going to be three Tor nodes. Remember that we, we saw that a minute ago um, in, the, in the Tor browser itself. Now here we see the three Tor nodes um, that we are going to be going through in order to get to a web server. So it's created, it's created these by looking them up, and here we have the entry node, tour entry, tour middle, and tour exit. So all my traffic is going to go through all those, um, through all three of those servers in order to obscure my traffic and, and, and uh, give me anonymous browsing. So let's look at the next slide and see how a little bit more how it works. Okay, here we see that um, my computer has some data that it wants to send over to the web server. And as we know, it has to go through all of these, uh, all of these servers uh, to get there. So let's see exactly how it goes, uh, how this goes. We'll go to the next slide. Now here we see that my data has been wrapped by another layer which says that the destination is 5.5.5.5. .5 .5 .5. 
Now, in addition to adding that extra layer, that layer has been encrypted with Tor exit nodes key. So you can see that there's an encrypted layer. So the data cannot be seen by anybody except for 4.4.4.4. Okay, so let's see what happens next. Okay, now here you can see that we've added one more layer. This layer is shows that there's a destination is going to be 4.4.4.4, uh, and that has negotiated to have um, to be encrypted by the key that only the Tor middle node 3.3.3.3 has. So nobody except the Tor middle node would be able to read that destination. Okay, here we see we've added one more layer and that has been negotiated with the um, Tor entry node 2.2.2.2 and we see that there's also a session key so that it's been negotiated that only 2.2.2.2 um, only or the Tor entry is able to decrypt this layer. So let's, let's understand that this is decrypted, this is encrypted here, meaning that nobody can read anything inside. It, the only thing that can be read is by the Tor entry node could read it with its session key um, in, order, in order to know where to send it next. Okay, now here we see that the entire onion, as you call it, has been sent over to the Tor entry node, which is 2.2.2.2. Now, only it can decrypt this layer. Remember, those keys match right here. So, it, can it goes ahead and decrypts that layer, which says to send it over to 3.3.3.3, or the middle um, the Tor middle node. Now here we see that the outer layer has been peeled off and it's sent over to the Tor middle node. Now if you notice that the keys match, so only the Tor middle node can decrypt um, it can decrypt the packet which because this is on the outside. No one can see inside except um, for this one, which has been, uh, this, which the session key has been created for both. So it can go ahead and decrypt this, the, the middle node can decrypt this, and see that it needs to send it over to the next, um, the next node, or the exit node, which is Tor 4.4.4.4. Uh, Okay, here we can see that the outer layer has been peeled off and the packet has been sent over to the Tor exit node. It's 4.4.4.4 here. So now, um, what does it do? It can go ahead and decrypt with its session key. It's going to go ahead and decrypt the outer layer and then it knows to send it to 5.5.5.5. Okay, here we see that the final layer has been peeled off the onion and the data has been sent over to the server. So what we learned is that from my computer to the entry node, from the entry node to the middle node, and from the middle node to the exit node, it's all encrypted. However, this last hop, that data was not encrypted. So what we've learned is how Tor can be used to anonymize your browsing because it's encrypted all along the way. So your ISP or the, um, or the NSA for that matter, or anybody that's trying to track you is going to have an awfully difficult time to do that. This has been Huckleberry. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you like this, please go ahead and mash down that like button. 
Hope to see you soon.